Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios in Atlanta, it's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Spotlighting business leaders in our area. Gwinnett Business Radio is brought to you by Ferritech. Ferritech, great people, remarkable service. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to another award-winning edition of Gwinnett Business Radio here on Business Radio X, live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios. I am merely Mike Salmon, alongside the wonderful, great, quit shaking your head, Stephen Julian. How you doing, Stephen? I'm doing great, Mike. Where are we putting all these awards? I, I know we have one behind us. We've got a closet. Or is that drawer getting full? No, we've got a closet you? down the hall. By Fantastic. the way, congratulations. I, I don't like to get too personal during shows, but congratulations. You just celebrated your 20th anniversary yes sir yes your wonderful wife stacy yes i outpunted my coverage in a big way when when she said yes so well, congratulations thank hopefully you. another 20 more uh, wonderful years at, at least at least that's that's our prayers and our hopes thank you very much that's very kind yes see i did something nice to start the day Aww. for you all right well we, so, so that settles it for the year you're done now now I, you I, can I'm go back already to over the quota <laughs> that's my one nice thing for you for the day i'll get another one in five years when we celebrate 25. and i even gave you a gift today a business radio x you name did, tag you did and i didn't put it on because that's for networking events right exactly yeah all right it's in my pocket We've got a full house today, Steve, and a lot of folks here, we're excited to talk to them. Uh, joining us from the Gwinnett Ballet Theater, we're joined by Hallie Kalmies. Holly Kalmies. Holly. <laughs> That's okay. What did I just say, Hallie? Hallie, yeah. It's a nice name. <laughs> Off to a roaring start, <laughs> yeah. Mike. And Amy Ward. At least I got one out of two. Let's see how many else I can butcher. Good morning. From Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic, uh, Dr. Toshley Green. Hello. Yeah, I got that. From Techno Academy, Josh Sides. Hi. Hey, Josh. And Kyle Valencia from Motive Deals Fundraising. And we're going to start, uh, Stephen, with Holly and Amy from Gwinnett Ballet Theater. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good morning. morning. Give us a broad overview of the Gwinnett Ballet Theater. Tell us all about the organization. Well, we are the oldest nonprofit performing arts organization in Gwinnett. We were founded in 1977. And we have grown ever since then to be this wonderful organization, which is located on Sugarloaf Parkway right across the street from Gwinnett Tech. We have 22,000 square feet, five studios. It's the biggest studio in the Atlanta area. Oh, wow. It is, it is something for Gwinnett to be incredibly proud of. Um, we're considered one of the big three arts organizations in Gwinnett. Uh, along with the Aurora Theater and the Hudgens Center. So we're also very proud of that. Um, we've been providing young dancers out into the, to the world on a regular basis ever since we began. And we have the second largest nutcracker in the state of Georgia, actually in the South. Uh, we perform here at the Infinite Energy Theater uh, for 16 shows every December and play to over 12,000 people. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, Congratulations. It is, it's great. It's great. So, um, And there's so much more to it than that, but I'm going to let my friend Amy tell you a little bit more. Yes. Um, we're also really proud of the outreach programs that Gwinnett Ballet has been able to provide to the community. Um, we ha are into our second season of offering sensory-friendly performances to audiences for whom a traditional theater experience isn't comfortable. This is a lot of individuals who may be on the autism spectrum or with other physical or mental disabilities for whom a traditional theater setting isn't comfortable. We adjust the lighting and the sound, and our dancers have been... Um, educated about how the performance will be a little bit different as far as the audience reaction, which actually is phenomenal. Um, we've been lucky to partner with the Hirsch Academy when we first started this and also have funding from the Community Foundation of Northeast Georgia. And it's a tradition that we're continuing um, into our next season. The dancers, the ballerinas, where do you get the performers from? They are actually um, students. Our, we are a pre-professional company. Okay per se. Um, our students are um, children ages 2 to 18 in the Gwinnett County metro Atlanta area. So they are actually, um, our dancers are our students. They attend the Gwinnett Ballet School. Well, I have to brag on them uh, also. I, we're, one thing that we're extremely proud of is the quality of our teaching. We have an amazing staff that are all professional dancers with professional dance backgrounds. And um, the result is that our students are given scholarships and uh, what do we call summer intensives. Uh, for example, we have had eight of our students, these are advanced students, 
um, accepted to the summer program at the American Ballet Theater in New York City. So that's, that's pretty darn good, <laughs> and that's, that's something to be very, very proud of. And these kids dance six hours a day, six days a week, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So it is something it's that they're job right there. very dedicated to. And I must say that they are the greatest athletes in the world and they're not just girls <laughs> we've got almost 20 young men now and of all ages that um uh enjoy being around those girls so, so. The, the six hours a day six days a week is that kind of standard if someone is accepted into the program and is one of the dancers no um you can do it on a casual basis also okay so um, you have all levels yes absolutely it can be for fun yeah um uh, but what we do also offer is if you study with us and you are committed to trying for a professional career, you do have a chance of actually making it because of the excellence of mm-hmm. the training. Now, I'm going to ask a question kind of out of ignorance. If I'm, if, if I'm a parent and one of my students gets accepted in the top-line program where they are doing the, the most instruction they possibly can, does this go around their normal school schedule? Is it an actual school where they enroll? Talk a little bit about that. The, the program itself, actually, it's very flexible, and it kind of – the majority of our classes are in the afternoon evenings. Mm-hmm. So the majority of our students actually do attend traditional schools, mm-hmm. whether that be a private school or a Gwinnett County public school. Um, there is the option of, um, of a s- more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Intensive, Intensive training. Okay. Um, there are students that, that might modify their um, educational programming mm-hmm. so that they either homeschool or do a um, online type school so that they have more hours on their own Mm -hmm. to continue their training. Um, I think the long-term plan for um, Gwinnett Ballet Theater School is to actually have a conservatory program, which would be a program where there were were extended training hours for those particular dancers who were very committed to making this um, it's like their sport, their activity. It's a career path for them, in which case they would um, have to choose a program that would fit around a longer training day. Um, but our students are very um, committed to what they do. You would be amazed that most of them, the work ethic that they have, most of them graduate with honors and mm-hmm. uh, receive scholarships to universities mm-hmm. all over the country because they want to dance, so they make it work. So any skill level, yeah. any entry to to as as good as you want to get and as intensive as you want to get. That's fantastic. Yes. We're talking with um, Holly and Amy with the Gwinnett Ballet Theater. Uh, Holly's the marketing director. Amy is the production uh, manager. Uh, coming up March 24th and 25th, Friends and Famous Dances. Tell us about Friends and Famous Dances. Um, Friends and Famous Dances means that we have some famous dances we're presenting. We're presenting Act 2 of Swan Lake. People are familiar with the term Swan Lake, and it's very difficult, very classical, but it's also very beautiful, familiar people, or everybody loves Swan mm-hmm. Lake, comes to, comes to see that. Pas de Cot, which is a ballet from 1845, that's also very difficult, but then we have friends from across the world that are coming in. Uh, we have a group from, that's called the Assembly, from Orange Beach, California, that is coming in, and another group uh, called Kaiser Ballet, coming in from Portugal. These wow. are personal friends of our teachers and directors. Actually, we're, we're really excited because our Portug- Portuguese contingent was just accepted into the finals of uh, Portugal's Got Talent. <laughs> so wow. it was kind of fun. But they're, they're a beautiful group of young people. They will be doing a lot more contemporary ballet, a little jazzier, a little bit more upbeat than the classical, although all of it is, is very beautiful. So, And it's actually, we have the sensory show on the 25th at 7.30 at the Infinite Mm -hmm. um, Energy Theater and our two shows for the uh, open to the public on the 26th on Saturday um, at 2.30 and 7.30. So all of these uh, for this Friends uh, event is at the Infinite Energy Center? They're at the Infinite Energy Theater. Theater. Yes. It's part of the center. (laughs) Yeah, it's there. It is part of the center, If you get there, they'll tell you where to go. They'll tell you where to go. I'm just used to it being the Gwinnett, Gwinnett performing arts it's, it's a transition the now old, the old peck at at the facility across yes. from uh, at the facility on sugarloaf parkway do you guys ever do performances there or is that strictly for that's training? strictly the studio okay. um studio space for the school for training and rehearsals um although we do it's a beautiful facility um we have the added benefit of it being a gallery space um holly's husband richard is actually an internationally known dance photographer and he has a beautiful exhibit up there um for viewing all the time and we do actually um, have corporate events there at the space as well. It's, it's a wonderful place for sponsors mm-hmm. 
to uh, have a free a free space that's very beautiful to have corporate parties mm -hmm. or corporate events, training you know training events. And since we are active mostly between three or three thirty in the afternoon until the wee hours, <laughs> uh, we have all day when people are you know it's available to the community. Now that's a marketing director right there. <laughs> yes, a very good marketing director. Now you guys perform at the uh, Infinite Energy. Theater. Theater. Yes. Thank you. Um, I would imagine also half performers will travel. Are there other places you guys have performed in the county and in the metro area that you go to? We um, always perform at Barefoot in the Park. Um, we fine have arts a, festival. Yes, we have some fine arts festivals. Um, we are honored, actually, also that very same weekend, we're going to be guests, have some guest performers at the High Hope Service Center. Um, when at Kids Have Got Talent mm -hmm. show, we like to help promote other nonprofits in the area so we're going to be um we're going to have a few dancers there to um perform some a classical piece there for, as well um so yeah um i believe the lawrenceville arts festival this past summer we had some performers yeah. there if, if there's an opportunity yes. for us to get out in front of people and to share our message uh we want to do that that's great stuff. Now, I want to get back to the Nutcracker because uh, that's your big event. You said the second largest in the southeast. Is that based on performances? Uh, number of performances. Number of performances. And, and people reached, yes. All right. Yes. This year, 2016, is kind of a special one for you. It Why is. is that? It is our 35th anniversary performance of the Nutcracker here at the Gwinnett. In the Gwinnett Air Infinite Theater. Energy Theater. Now yes, got her yes now I'm saying it. <laughs> but yes, it is our 35th anniversary performance. So that's a really exciting um, anniversary to to mark. Um, and so we're we're hoping to have some exciting additions to the performance, um, maybe a new spin on it. Uh, and we're hoping that the community will celebrate this milestone with us as well. Absolutely. I want to go back to one other. Um, you kind of started the interview talking a little bit about the outreach program. Yes. I have a son with Asperger's. Yes. So it, it, that is you try to do a special outreach program while you're doing a normal. Pre so like for the Nutcracker, one of those, at least one of those performances yes. would be outreach. Yes. Um, and, and do you try to do that every time you get multiple performances? I noticed you said it also about the thing coming up uh, this month. So yes, unpack that any more <laughs> that you want to, because that hit home with me. It's it's. It was um, an idea. Um, our one of our parents of one of our dancers. Her name is Jennifer Manton, and she works with the Hirsch Academy. Mm -hmm. And she brought the idea to the board um, two years ago for the Nutcracker um, 2014. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that was the first time we attempted a sensory friendly performance. It was a new concept of how could we modify this traditional show it's a holiday tradition how ca you know with some slight changes which were actually really easy to do how could we make this an inviting atmosphere for all people to enjoy and it was absolutely the most it's they are still my favorite as a production manager I love the sh love to start a run with that show because there's such an energy in the audience the dancers adore it but you know we at GBT realize that you know this is something really special that we can do for the community at large and it's, we're going to put it on a performance anyway so um we've our artistic director wade walthall he thought it was great as well so it's kind of one of those things we're adding it making sure one of our shows with each performance is sensory friendly um, we have the greatest success with audiences of course during the daytime shows for the nutcracker because that's like a school audience mm -hmm. and you know, but with our other performances, um, we are trying to get an evening show as well so that families, you know, also and other individuals could come at night and still enjoy the performance, even though we don't have access to perform during the day mm -hmm. for those shows. It's not just for children. It's not. There, there are a lot of adults with mm -hmm. uh, sensory issues and brain injuries. I'd like to, to yes. make a shout out to the Brain Injury Foundation of Georgia and Paige Havens. Yes. She's been very helpful with us and also the ticket price for the sensory friendly shows we it's a reduced price mm -hmm. our, our typical show ticket is between 20 and 35 dollars but our sensory friendly shows are, are marketed at the six dollar price because we know that families with with in families and individuals with these um modifications it's you know it can be um a theater experience is, might be an extravagance, and we want them to have access to the performance. So it's a very moderate ticket price um, for the exact same show. We do not condense the show. We don't cut the show. We don't change it in any way other than to modify the lighting and the sound 
and maybe take, if there are any um, pyrotechnics or anything like that, anything that could be startling. Mm -hmm. We keep the doors open. There's freedom of movement. Everybody's dancing. So much fun. Those in the aisles. Just, it's great. Yeah, they, yeah, they're dancing in the aisles literally yes. while I'm watching the show. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. It's, and, and what we learn about these individuals is amazing mm -hmm. because I had never myself been around um, autism. Mm -hmm. And uh, you learn so much about what wonderful special people they are. Well, Holly and Amy, the Gwinnett Valley Theater does so much for it for the community. Before we let you go, a lot of our listeners are business owners, business leaders. How can businesses support your efforts? We are looking for sponsors for this big 35th anniversary of Nutcracker. And we give back a great deal to these corporate partners and friends and uh, I would encourage anyone who would get excited about this for their employees as well as their patrons uh, to contact us at uh, Gwinnett Ballet. It, uh, the best way to go about it probably is to contact me at H-C-A-L-M-E-S at mindspring.com or you can call 404-317-8470 and um, we would welcome your enthusiasm and your participation and and we would love to have you on board with us. It's going to be a really exciting year with a lot of fun. And also for folks that want to participate, want to dance, uh, want to get involved, volunteer, any other ways, uh, what's the best thing for them to do? Um, GwinnettBallet.org. Um, check out the website. You could also contact Holly directly um, it, or call the studio 770-237-0046. That's the studio number. Um, after 3. After 3 p.m., yes. We are open from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night. Um, or you can leave a message anytime during the day. But you can find out more information about our school and our dance training programs, summer classes, summer intensives. and all Summer camps for yes. little ones. Yes. So nothing going on there, is there? Oh, Ever. Holy cow. That's exhausting, <laughs> but it is so invigorating and wonderful. And these young people are so beautiful and special. And, it's just great. Holly Calmes and uh, Amy Ward from Gwinnett Ballet Theater, thanks so much for coming by and, and sharing the great work you're doing. Thank you so Thank much you, for letting us be Thank here. You. Absolutely. Thank you. And we look forward to helping and supporting you guys any way we can in the future as well. Mike, yet another example of people who love what they do. And speaking of love, it is what makes a Subaru. You can get big savings and enjoy a hassle-free experience. Subaru of Gwinnett, where people sell cars. Subaru of Gwinnett, also the main sponsor studio that – we're sitting in the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios, correct? I think so. Last time I checked, yes. Absolutely. And you can also visit SubaruofGwinnett.com and join the family today. You can come in and see the difference. Maybe you're already a Subaruist, then you can follow Subaru of Gwinnett Facebook page for the latest Subaru offers news and community events. Well done, Stephen. I love the way you do that. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, let's go to our next guest now here on the program from Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic. It's Dr. Tosh Lee Green. Good, Good morning, morning, Dr. Green. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well. Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic. The, the, the mobile kind of caught my attention. Tell me about your company and what you do. Okay, so we've been in business for about nine months. We, um, I decided to take the – we've only been mobile for less than a month. So a lot of people have an issue with – <clears throat> excuse me, taking time off work. I know my husband will wait weeks to go to the doctor because he's like, I can't get the time off work. So I've designed the, the company so that I can come to you at the home office and see a lot of people. So it allows me to provide the services to people who normally wouldn't get them. Okay, tell us about your background, your educational, your training. So I did my undergrad in Indiana at Indiana University in exercise science and came down here with my bachelor's to Life University and went through their four-year doctorate program and graduated um, almost a year ago. Chiropractic care, is that something that you believe everybody should kind of look into that or is that just for specific type folks? Who's, who's a good patient for you? Um, you know, a lot of people, everybody should be under chiropractic care. Even if you're not in pain, there's still a need to get checked. So in the body, you have the brain that controls the entire, entire body. You have the nervous system that comes down and goes th out through the spine. And if the bones that protect that spine become out of place, it puts pressure and interference onto those nerves and inter interferes with the body's natural healing ability. So um, that can lead to anything and everything um, that you can think of, thyroid cancer, um, digestive issues, knee pain, joint pain, um, 
end. So, so don't wait until you start to feel pain. Just get yourself checked every once in a while, even if you think you're in good shape. Yes. Um, and even if you're not um, in pain, if you are an athlete that performs, like I have a um, patient who is a ballet, is a, a performer at the Gwinnett Ballet. And she comes because she knows that it improves her performance. And because when you're doing those intricate movements, you need to have the best communication between all of your body. And chiropractic allows you to do that. Dr. Green, let me let you go back and kind of expand a little bit on the mobile chiropractic. This is a relatively new concept, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. So if I'm a business owner, um, first of all, my first question when I think, okay, a chiropractor is going to come to my place of business, what's the liability to the business owner and what's the space needs that the business owner needs to give you to set up a, a mobile chiropractic? Uh, my, m both my medical uh, malpractice and my liability travels with me. Mm -hmm. So the, the liability is still on me. Perfect. Um, I would need you know, a six foot by eight foot area to set up. And that's boy, that's a need. big need. Six foot by eight by eight foot. I Mike, I, I don't know if there's enough space in most businesses to set that up. So I, you don't need a lot of space. There's no not. real liability. And and I, I guess I kind of think of what are some of the other services, you know, so, for example, a, a, a car detailing company says, hey, we'll come uh, we'll come to you and we'll just clean all the cars in the parking mm -hmm. lot. And you're you're kind of doing the same thing. But for the actual employees, let's get mm -hmm. the employees feeling better. Does the business owner owe you anything to, to show up or is, a, is there a cost to the business owner? You have one of two options. One, the business owner can decide to bring me in as a perk and they can pay a daily fee. Or they can come in and each individual person can pay me a discounted fee. Um, it is completely up to them. Wow. And and do you normally like to meet the employees ahead of time? Hey, let me come in and, and talk to the employees about what to do. Or is it more like the business owner just says, hey, let me let me just tell my 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 employees we got I got a chiropractor coming in. Do you want to meet with her? What's the better What's the best way to set it up? I guess would be the way. To Either say way it. is fine. It really depends on the. Um, demand. So if, if you know that they're going to be receptive and are, you know, some people don't know a lot about chiropractic. So if I need to come in and do that education ahead of time, I am happy to do so. And if not, then we can just set it up and I come in the first day. We're talking with Dr. Tosh Lee Green with Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic here on Gwinnett Business Radio. You mentioned your background, Dr. Green, Indiana, mm -hmm. Life yep. University. Yes. Why did you decide to become a chiropractor? Well, I was one of those kids in school where I could not go 10 minutes without manually popping my own back. And I mean, I remember in fifth grade, I couldn't go 10 minutes without pain. So I wouldn't want you sitting behind me then in the desk behind me, right? You'd be trying to working on my neck. Well, maybe it'd be a good thing working on the neck and everything while I'm sitting there. Well, I was too busy working on myself. Um, I got gotcha. So when I found chiropractic and I started going to a chiropractor, all of those issues went away. The pain went away the need to self-adjust went away because the because my spine was finally in the correct position and it wasn't causing pain. So that led me into chiropractic. I actually was pre-med for a little while and um, I wanted to be an OB for a while and realized that it was a lot of GYN. So I decided to switch to chiropractic. <laughs> It'd be okay. With, the OB was okay. It was the GYN you didn't want to have to deal with. That is with. true. Yeah. You know. Do you have any specials that you're running right now for businesses? Um, right now, um, I will offer the travel fee for free for anybody who mentions this radio podcast. Ooh. And um, so, yeah. And then I do bulk discounts for businesses as well. When you go into uh, so if you're going into a business, I guess one of the other questions I had is if I'm an employee and go, well, I've already got a chiropractor. Now, granted, I haven't been able to go to them for the last three weeks because I couldn't get off work. Mm -hmm. Speaking back to the, the concept with your husband. Is that something, once somebody's got a chiropractor, is it okay if they also come to see you? Is there communication that can happen between you and other chiropractors? Well, my first question would be, is your chiropractor taking care of all your issues? Mm. So I have a patient who has had, she had horrible headaches and hor horrible migraines her entire life. She, um, she went to chiropractic. The chiropractic helped the migraines but it didn't get rid of the headache. So every day since she was 18, she has had a headache that she would rate between a four and a seven on the pain scale. And she was seeing a chiropractor regularly. 
I take a little bit of a different approach than some chiropractors. So I, there's a couple of listings that I adjust that some other chiropractors don't. So I, she gave me the opportunity to adjust her. And in the last six weeks, she's had one headache. So if you are happy with your chiropractor, stay with your chiropractor. But if you want to see if there's something better, then I'll be Talk happy to Talk to help. Dr. Tosh Lee Green. There you go. I'll we, say it. <laughs> Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic. Dr. Green, give us the, the, the contact information and uh, your website, any information you want to share for folks that want to find out more about you and your services. Wonderful. The, um, the website is www.godrgreen, go D-R-Green, um, dot com. The um, email is info at godrgreen.com. The phone number is 678-842-4378. All right, Dr. Tosh Lee Green with Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic. And don't forget, if you mention Business Radio X, you'll get that special free deal. travel special. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Green. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Steven? Mike? Steven, happy anniversary again. Thank you. And a beautiful sign behind you of the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios. We already talked about that, didn't we? We have, but what we didn't talk about is where that sign behind you came from. That sign came from Speed Pro Imaging in Marietta. They help businesses. You're a business, right, Mike? Last time I checked. They helped you stand out by providing high quality. After this show, I don't know. Yeah, well, we say that every week, and yet we continue to plow on. But they help businesses, maybe not like yours, but other businesses stand out by providing high quality large graphics. If you can imagine it, they can make it. As the industry leader for large-scale printing, they deliver impactful images that share a message, attract attention, and reinforce your brand. To find out more, visit Speed Pro Marietta. Dot com. Yes, they do a great job. We appreciate uh, their support. All right, moving on. Our next guest here on Gwinnett Business Radio. This is an interesting guest, a young man from Alpharetta High School, correct? Yep. Josh? Uh, Josh Sides, Techno Academy. You're a high school student, but you're an entrepreneur. Tell us about your company that you started. Yeah, well, um, in freshman year of high school, which was three years ago, so 2012, basically, um, I started a nonprofit, uh, 501c3, called Techno Academy, and what we do is we teach senior citizens and veterans how to use technology. So basically, all the basics from like Facebook to email and cell phones and everything like that. And we mainly try to involve high school students because you know we're on our phones all the time. That's just you know the trend for especially younger generations. So you know we've been doing lessons for the last three years, and then you know doing some more like major national products that we kind of partner with different nonprofits to send out across the country as well. All right, Josh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, aren't you, you're supposed to be playing video games and doing things like that. You're into yourself, and you want to help veterans and senior citizens. Well, I mean, he is. He does those things, but he helps other people do them too, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's amazing. So, so what was the inspiration? Because most kids your age, they're not thinking entrepreneurship. They're not thinking starting nonprofits. They're not thinking, I, I don't think your kids are, Stephen. I know mine aren't. <laughs> <laughs> not to that scale, that's for sure. Yeah, so what inspired you to, to, to want to do this? Yeah, well, I mean, always since I was in middle school, I always wanted to know. I know I'd started business when I was older. That's something that really interests me. Um, and especially for this nonprofit uh, specifically, I'd always help my own grandparents. I have a couple who live in, in New York and some who live in Atlanta as well. And every time I go to visit them, I'd always be helping them with their own technology. They'd always be like, Josh, how do I set up this new iPad or, you know, how do I email you or something like that? And I realized that it was, you know, they weren't the only ones who were having the problem. There were other, you know, senior citizens who also, you know, need this help and they're not getting it. So I really wanted to take action, you know, get into some more entrepreneurial experience before I go off to college. I'd like to take Josh home with me after the show, <laughs> let him meet my mom. I was going to say, you have an iPad, you need him to help you set up, right? That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Josh, I, I'm going to ask, you kind of started by saying a few different ways, and you said, including other high schoolers and maybe college students, can you kind of unpack uh, a little bit of some of the specifics of how other high schoolers connect um, to help out with senior citizens and, and, and with former military? So, so kind of and it sounds like you've done it through online classes. It sounds like you've done it through one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, what are some of the actual ways that, that you've had people help senior citizens and, and former military? Yeah. So our main way that we've done in the past and continue to do right now is in-person lessons. So, uh, you know, we go out to different senior living homes, uh, assisted living, YMCAs, libraries, and things like that. And we hold in-person lessons, bringing high school volunteers, you know, to help one-on-one. -on -one. We did some research with some Georgia Tech and Army professors on kind of the 
most effective teaching methods for seniors and we found that it was in-person kinesthetic hands-on learning so we really want try to focus on that as well in everything we do uh, we started a few chapters eight chapters across the country uh, run by different high school students who kind of start in-person lessons in their own areas as well and you know we obviously can't reach all areas in the United States in person so we try to do some online projects as you mentioned we have on our website technoacademy.org we do we have like hundreds of tutorials and everything like that and every so often we do some different projects as well for example uh, last fall we did a 68 page pocket guide that we had professionally printed and then you know we worked with United Way chapters in different states to kind of send them out to senior citizens in their own areas uh, we did that as well with a similar DVD that we made and then just a couple of weeks ago, we actually released a mobile app for iOS and soon to be Android as well. That kind of has all of our resources on it, uh, basically. How, Josh, how old are you again? Uh, 17. What I loved was the <laughs> quote where he said, when I was in middle school, I knew when I got older, I was going to start a company. I went, right, when you're 15. Yeah. So in middle school, you're, when I get much older and I turn 15, that's when I'm going to start my. <laughs> now, uh, so let me ask this. You, you, you are an entrepreneur. This is a 501c3 that you've been running f since you were a freshman in high school. So talk a little bit about some of the businesses. Mm -hmm. I know this is great, and you're going to keep this probably and keep doing this, giving back to the community. So you started with giving back to the community before you did the business side of things. What are what are some of the next steps when it comes to businesses? And you don't have to give away all your secrets, but but what are you hoping this leads to in terms of? Uh, yeah, Trey, our producer, shaking his head. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell us the secrets because we want to steal them. No, talk about what are the next steps when it comes to the businesses. What do you, what are you hoping this leads to on the entrepreneurial side? Yeah, well, since the beginning, I've always kind of thought of this venture as a business um, in itself, and I've really tried to press forward with some of the more entrepreneurial aspects of nonprofits as well, and kind of you know delve into that and do all of that I can right now. I, to get some more experience. So I focus on, you know, interacting with other businesses through the nonprofit, through grants and sponsorships and things like that. Um, we've gotten, uh, received a few grants from ABC, Disney, and some other places that kind of funded our projects. So that's really been fun to, you know, kind of interact with some other businesses and, you know, get in some pitching and things like that. And, you know, I really do want to continue this as I go off to college. Um, the chapters initiative will really help to, you know, keep the impact going. And, you know, I'll probably, where, where go, wherever I go to college, I'll probably, you know, start a chapter in that area as well. And um, I'm looking to major in computer science and economics. So, you know, Duh. based on that, I'll probably <laughs> get, uh, you know, some more business ideas, you know, start, start another business so you like that. I, I, like, I like that phrase, the entrepreneurial nonprofit. So, th so don't just think an entrepreneur is all for profit. There's an entrepreneurial side of this nonprofit of what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, I, you know, I've kept up with a lot of the trends recently and everything like that. Social entrepreneurship is really becoming a big thing, you know, for for profits as well as for nonprofits, you know, getting into more business aspects of things. Um, I've really tried to as well, aside from just a nonprofit also, you know, keep up. I do a lot of writing as well for business writing um, for different magazines and things like that. I guess kind of some of my experiences try to help other young students uh, entre slash entrepreneurs and other people as well. So that's really interesting. <laughs> uh and we're talking with Josh Shides of, of Techno Academy. Josh, we, we said before we went on the air that we weren't going to give you any Mike Wallace 60, which I'm sure that reference just totally went over your head since you're a high school senior. Um, maybe we should have said uh, Anderson Cooper, you know, type questions. Um, but I'm going to give you the closest one, I think, possibly that wasn't on, you know, wasn't talked about before. It is a nonprofit, but you've been able to earn a salary out of this. I'm assuming you've been able to earn some I guess I call it personal profit, but it's not. You, a nonprofit, you are allowed to earn a salary out of it. So this is you. That's where the entrepreneurial side of it. You don't have to make millions and millions. You've been able to earn a living through your nonprofit. Well, um, since I'm really a high school student, there's not that many expenses uh, thanks right. to my parents, really. But um, I don't. I do really consider it an entrepreneurial experience, but I don't keep any of the money for myself. Okay. Uh, I really don't need it at this time. I do some, you know, coding projects and uh, freelance things like that on the sides. You know, make some money, but. Um, everything that we do make from grants and everything like that, we awesome. just keep in the business to, you know, make new projects. And but I guess I see that the concept of the entrepreneurial nonprofit, it, there is an exactly. opportunity yes. as you continue yeah, to definitely. grow this mm -hmm. and the writing and, and other things. So that's fantastic. Yeah. He handled that question very well, Mike. Steven, you and I used to mow lawns. He's doing coding <laughs> projects. I sold baseball cards. That was my entrepreneurial side in high school. Talk about your, your, your family and how, you know, what were their thoughts when you said, this is what I want to do, and how have they uh, supported you with your endeavors? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, as my family has always known, I've been you know, really persistent in everything that I do. I always come up with a lot of new ideas. You know, from middle school, I'd always been 
you know, just throwing out ideas at them all the time. And, you know, I guess at first they weren't, you know, they didn't know if it worked, especially I was just a freshman, just coming up with some, you know, just spitballing ideas and everything like that. But, you know, as it's kind of uh, grown and uh, had a bigger impact, you know, they've been really supportive. Um, at first, I know since I didn't have a driver's license in freshman, sophomore year, my mom would always be driving me to all of the lessons and everything like that. So, you know, it's been a really great experience. And the volunteers that you get, they mo I would imagine at first you found them in f friends and in through your high school. But how do you how do you plant a new field? How do you how do you find um, either new volunteers in, in current chapters and, and as you build other chapters? Has it all been just online chatter or what are some of the other ways you you've you found new new chapters well yeah as you mentioned at first it was just friends but the main bulk of all of our volunteers come from schools so service organizations like beta club key club um you know national honor society everything like that you know they we all have to do required service hours and this is one of the more fun opportunities out there, you know, to use technology while also helping others. So, and I would think easy for the typical high schooler. Exactly, like, yeah. Oh, this is easy. All I got to do is, you know, so, yeah, but it also, it, I, I love the concept. I used to, I used to work in nonprofit with teenagers and the concept of bridging a generation gap. Um, you know, in, in the past it was go visit nursing homes and, th and that still needs to be done, but go with something that you're confident exactly. in mm -hmm. and, and you, and then learn the concept of how to teach it to someone who's not confident in it. That's got to that's got to do some light bulbs and open some eyes of some teenagers who do this. Exactly. Uh, one of our main focuses is intergenerational activity. We really want to focus on connecting middle and high school students to the older generations, you know, kind of break some stigmas or stereotypes that may be out there about, you know, if senior citizens don't want to learn new things or, you know, young people can't, you know, they're not knowledgeable in anything yet to, you know, share some advice. So I think that's one of the best experiences that I've had is really learning from senior citizens, them learning from us and, you know, kind of sharing some stories back and forth as well. If I'm a business owner listening to this podcast, um, first we heard that they can be sponsors for the Gwinnett Ballet. What are some ways that business owners can can help you? Yeah, just uh, really similar. Uh, we do have sponsorships that are out there, donations from individuals as well. You know, we're always looking for funds to start new projects like the mobile app. We know we had to pay for development for that as well. So anytime we're able to get some more funds, we're able to put that back in the business and you know, offer some new projects for senior citizens and veterans. Um, that can be done through our website, uh, technoacademy.org, or just calling me at 470-222-5194. Uh, you, you actually answer the phone? You're not going to text with them? <laughs> I could do that, too. <laughs> Sorry. And I think you kind of answered the question for, for those seniors, veterans that want to find out more about the uh, of what you do and could use your help and don't understand the whole digital technology today. Like I said, my mom just finally got an iPhone. And she's finally going to go to the cell store and, uh, you know, take a class to figure out how to use her phone. A lot of folks out there that, that could use your help. Uh, where give, give the website again. I assume that's where they would go to get all the information, how they could find out more and, and, and get some classes or online support. Exactly. It's uh, technoacademy.org. You know, that's kind of common spelling uh, with our organization. It's T-E-C-H-N-O-C-A-D-E-M-Y.org. Um, that, that has all of our tutorials, tips, and you know schedules for future lessons as well. Okay, great. Uh, Josh, appreciate the great work you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, congratulations. Continued success. Go play a video game once in a while. Be a kid. But uh, congratulations. This is an amazing story that you have to share. Thanks so much for having me. All right, uh, Josh Sides with uh, Techno Academy here on Gwinnett Business Radio. You know, Josh has not even been alive for 25 years, Mike. Did you realize that? He hasn't even been alive for 20 years. You've been I got married, married longer, yes. But I was. But do you know why I used 25 years? Because one of our sponsors, Ferratech. Ferratech has been in business for 25 years. Did you know that? You did know that. I do now. Yes. And they've been in business 25 years by manufacturing top-of-the-line toner supplies, and they offer outstanding customer service. Ferratech offers a 100% guarantee on all Ferratech products, so you know that they stand behind their quality. For more info, visit ferratech.com. That's F-A-R-R-A-T-E-C-H.com. we got to set that to music before the year is out. Maria's going to, she's going to hear this, and she's going to call and say, yeah, yeah, set it to music, set it to music. We'll sing it before the year is Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Don't give her any ideas. Well, She'll make us do it. I know on that little magic keypad of yours, you've got, you know, we've got to move it. we got to maybe dub over it and do, I, I don't, I couldn't do it. We'll have to work on that post-production.
Please okay. don't. Please don't play. I'm it. not playing any music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Trey. And Z, uh, we're, that we're, I suggested we're doing that. a sound effects free show today. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to our final guest. Uh, last but not least, uh, from Motive Deals Fundraising, uh, Kyle Valencia is with us. Hello, Kyle. Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good, Kyle. Appreciate you coming into the studio today. Uh, Motive Deals Fundraising. Tell us about your company. Yeah, but before I do, I'd like to say uh, I really respect Josh for what he's doing. I also knew I was going to be a uh, an entrepreneur in high school, but I was a little more selfish about it. I uh, sold beef jerky to my classmates, and then an hour later, I would sell gum to them because I told them their breath smelled. And so, <laughs> oh. so yeah. But I really going back to Josh. That's that's awesome. I'm really uh, I'm really proud of you, and I definitely want to maybe grab coffee with you. Uh, Motive Deals Fundraising. So it is, um, or, or chocolate milk or something. I don't know if Josh or beef jerky coffee. apparently, <laughs> or beef jerky. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Motive Deals is um, the digital version of those plastic fundraising deal cards that high school football players sell. So what that means is now um, organizations are selling m- memberships to our platform, and you get all the deals on your smartphone. The cool thing about our platform is that it not only uh, allows the end user to get all the deals on their phone, and it's easier, and you don't forget that, uh, that card or that tear-off coupon in your uh, car or at home, but the local businesses, that's they, the problem. I buy the card and then I never have it with me when I, I need know, it. Right, right. right. You, and then you look at it and go, I got 14 days left. I got to go mm-hmm. to lunch every day. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no problem. Um, but it's also good for the local businesses. It's 100% free for them. They actually get their own portal where they can log in and create and manage all of their deals. So on top of that, uh, buy one, get one that Moe's is offering, they can actually log in and say, hey, next month, let's offer 150% off to the first 100 people. And so it's kind of a dynamic uh, platform for, for the businesses to have a free application to um, to target their local so, business. So the businesses don't get to they, – they don't come up with one deal. They can come up with as many deals Correct. as they we want. Correct. We ask the businesses to give one deal that's constant that we're, okay. you're used to, like the card. But on top of that, they can go crazy and create deals. So, okay, so here's – I'm going to – this – I don't think – I don't know if this was on the sheet or not, but I've been fascinated by this concept because the card goes back a, a many years, mm-hmm. uh, I guess. Um how does it start? Does it start by you finding the businesses or does it start by, and is it always you? Is it, you know, how does it, how does a, how does the concept start? Oh, uh, that's, that's a very interesting question. Cause when we started it three years ago, it was the whole chicken and the egg type thing, which came first. <laughs> yes. And so, um, it started with a lot of hustle of just saying, Hey, businesses, there's no fundraiser, but you want to give a deal for free? And so we got a platform in Alpharetta and Buford and some Norcross deals of just people believing in the idea. And then that's how we started. Then we went to those schools and said, look at all the deals we have. But now, um, like we're, we're doing some in South Georgia, Ohio. It's really our big, um, our big tagline is fundraise anywhere because we just have a school call us and say, hey, we're, we're from Tennessee, Knoxville. We'd love to, to use your platform. And so we just go get all those deals. We say the local school whatever is is doing it and then we get gather those deals around that area and then that's uh, how we kind of jump start their fundraiser typically what does a membership cost when a student or an athlete is selling it yeah it's the same thing as the card twenty dollars and then um it just it goes from there and does it last for the whole year it does mm-hmm. fantastic how big do you plan to, to grow this where do you where do you see this going years from now yeah so um we are actually in partnership with a really big organization called lake point sports I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's the new Bobby Cox uh, complex. Uh, he's one of the founding partners. Um, 1,400 acres just north of the new Brave Stadium. A billion with a B dollar project. Um, it's basically a sports complex for every single sports imaginable. Um, lacrosse, volleyball, um, 200,000 uh, square foot facility. Um, so we're actually creating their deal platform. And so there's 3 million people this year from all over the country that are going to come into Atlanta. They are going to play their big uh, World Series championship tournaments and then um, book hotels and stay here. And Lake Point's going to say download Lake Point deals. Um, it's 100% free for you guys to go. You don't know where to eat, sleep, or drink, so download it for free and go all uh, around Atlanta. And then the businesses are going to pay a premium to be on the platform. So that's uh, that, that 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 that's your anchor right there. Yes. So, and it's a different concept it because is. when a, you started, you said the businesses. It's fr- there is a platform where a, the businesses no a risk. Totally separate company. Yeah. That my company has um, invested interest in. Right. With Lake Point, and so there's this big cross pollination that's going to happen. Um, hopefully, in the next uh, five to ten days, we're, we're officially launching, where um, we're actually partnered. Motive Deals Fundraising is partnered with like Point Sports, where we're, we'll have some scoreboard ads and we're going to have um, some advertisement on the campus to fund raise anywhere. 
and then um, we're also helping them with uh, some sales and marketing of the actual platform itself. Do you know about what the cost? Uh, do, can you ballpark the cost for a business around that Lake Point Sports to to be a part of that platform? Sure. Or, or, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Um, so around, we're launching at um, anywhere between ninety nine to one ninety nine a month. Uh, one, uh, 199 is during the peak season um, but for l the launch if you hit me up on Twitter c at Kyle Valencia um, I can I can I can give you a really good discount because we're just trying to onboard as many um, businesses as, as possible um, our goal is to get about 500 businesses by May or June in that Lake Point area but also know this it's not just in the Emerson Cartersville area one tournament can bring in um, tens of thousands of people and Lake Point is helping them book hotel rooms in Buckhead and Johns Creek and Roswell because they're not playing all their games on the, the, the Lake Point campus. They're playing them, uh, they're renting fields across North Georgia. And so that's where the Lake Point deals has expansion or room for expansion because um, it's not just Emerson businesses that are going to hopefully in the end um, be paying for that advertisement. So obviously the Lake Point Sports has been your major thrust here the last few months as you're building this yes. out and, and yeah. building it up. Let me let you go a little bit beyond that. You get mm -hmm. that up and running, you get that humming, uh, you're doing great. What are some of the, uh, what are some of the school areas uh, around Gwinnett or around the metro area that you haven't yet gotten into that you'd like to expand into? Uh, the business owners listening in certain areas, they're going to hear this and then they're going to, once you mm -hmm. get Lake Point running, they're yeah, going to... Yeah get back to you what are some of the areas you haven't gotten into yet that you'd like to in the metro area yeah really um really we've uh, we've hit uh, let me tell you where we have hit yeah uh we've hit norcross johns creek alpharetta um in that uh, general area gwinnett we have not um hit it so if you live in gwinnett talk to your athletic directors or booster and we can if only business owners in gwinnett county could hear this maybe you know i, I Mike, do we have any Gwinnett business owners and, and school leaders who listen to this uh, show? One or two. Maybe a one couple. Or two. I, it, Just it a couple. It was almost strategic for Kyle to come on to Gwinnett Business Radio X. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, what about uh, maybe me. maybe a, a nonprofit that want to, are looking to ways to raise money? How can they sure. partner with you? Yeah, so any nonprofit, we can help them fundraise. And so um, we have a first uh, consultation where we figure out if it's a good fit. A good fit meaning since there's no risk to the organization they don't have to sell a certain amount of, of things and they're not on the hook for certain memberships uh, we need to make sure it's a good fit that they're willing to kind of hit our, our bottom minimums um, but really it's just a time where we can say how many students or players or, or, or fundraisers do you have and then us work the numbers and say do you feel confident that they can sell five memberships each or ten memberships that will get you to that 500 or thousand um, goal Okay, so apparently I'm the Mike Wallace slash Anderson Cooper guy today because I'm sitting here thinking, I think sometimes in the past, these type programs, the business owner, you, you, so let's go back to the no risk business mm -hmm. owner. I just got to offer, I got to make an offer that's going to stay on the platform the whole year. Sometimes a business owner uh, is wary of saying, you're going to make an offer that's going to actually lose me money. Is mm -hmm. there a minimum offer? Do they need to offer at least half off or can it be as simple as we'll give you, you know, we'll give you a free soft drink. We'll give you a... I mean, it, it can be as it's um, there's no offer. there's no we, we try to help the business owners try to see where the potential is. Um, like, for instance, I, I, we were um, we're doing a fundraiser in Valdosta in the next couple of weeks. And the business owner said, oh, well, we'll just do 75 percent off of this and this. And we said, I wouldn't really recommend right. that. It's awesome for us because we can promote that and sell a ton. But we wouldn't recommend that. Why don't you try toning it down and then offer two more that would be, you know, 175 percent off versus you know we're selling 2,000 memberships right right i like that kyle valencia joining us from motive deals uh, fundraising uh, kyle for those that would like to find out more uh get you mentioned your twitter is a one way to reach out to you uh, how are some other ways that people can reach out to you and of course give the website yeah the website is www.motivedeals.com m-o-t-i-v deals.com and uh, you can contact us through the website, or you can email me at Kyle, K-Y-L-E, at MotiveDeals.com. Great. Kyle, thanks for coming by. It's good thanks to see you. Me.
Kyle Valencia with Motive Deals Fundraising here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Also want to thank our other guest, uh, Josh Sides from Techno Academy, uh, Dr. Tosh Lee Green from Caring Hands Mobile Chiropractic, and our friends from, from uh, Gwinnett Ballet Theater, Holly uh, Kalmies and Amy Ward here on the program. A quick reminder that you can enjoy this program or any of our other Gwinnett Business Radio programs anytime you want, 24-7, day or night, by visiting Gwinnett Business Radio X. Dot com. You can also download any of our shows on iTunes, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. We're at Gwinnett Radio X. Check out our new YouTube channel, and uh, we're, we're everywhere. Uh, so check us out. We appreciate you joining us for the program. And, Stephen, before we say our goodbyes, any final parting words? Yes, I am uh, going to leave the show, and I'm uh, going to go on a case. It's a big case. I'm going to try and find the uh, E in Kyle's Motive and the A in Josh's Academy. Find those missing letters. Yes, yes. I think there was a Sesame Street character that did that. So, Well done, Stephen. Appreciate it very much. Congratulations again. Are you Thank you. Still Thank married? You. I, Going on 21. We'll, we'll see. You better call home. <laughs> After the show. A- absolutely. For, for Stephen Julian and for our producers, Z and uh, Trey, I'm Mike Salmon. We will see you next time right here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Uh, uh, uh.